this video, let's quickly go through how to create multiple section views and have them laid out on sheets so that we can use them for production drawings. In this drawing, I have all the pertinent information needed to create um, some section views. So let's just quickly come up here. Actually, before we start, if you're doing it in your drawing and doing it the way we're fixing to do, make sure that the drawing um, scale is set to what you want your sheets to be. It will affect the way it lays it out. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go to section views, multiple section views. We're going to leave all of this information the same, but under section placement, we're going to choose production option. Now I must choose a template. In said template, there must be view or layouts that have cross section viewports and, and they will show up. So here's my cross section template at a 10. And group plot styles, we're not going to mess with it right now, but we're going to go into that pretty deep here at the moment. We go ahead and create sections just so we'll get something on our screen. What it has done is, is laid, a, laid out our sections on sheets, with in my screen these blue lines, the outside being the edge of the paper, and this one being the, out, the edge of the viewable port in the layout that we made. And it has tried its best to lay out the sections that we have created or section views on each sheet. <clears throat> now, my section grid section properties have these grids set up. These magenta grids are in our plot style, or excuse me, in our page setup style. We go to settings, section, group plot style. This is where, where that we mentioned earlier is and it's what controls how these section views are laid out. I'll double click it and as you can see here these magenta lines are a grid inside of the printable space of the sheet which is under plot area and right now I've got them five by six. Now before I do anything notice that you know and I have it inserted at lower left, left. Okay, so pay attention to where this is inserted. So just to kind of give us a, a reference, it's here and it's here. So line between those two, two points is that zero mark on the first section. When I come over here, if I change this to upper left, it rearranges them and start with zero here on the same grid line horizontally. If I go to lower right, really going to tick it off, and it did nothing. Now watch what happens when I do lower left or upper right. It's just the same thing. Okay, so let's change this back to lower left because that's usually what I do, and I have them aligned about the left. If I change it to center probably see no change because my sections are the same width so that you can see the change if I come in here and let's edit this view and let's change it to 50 so that it's something different negative 50 50 hit OK it shifted it over now it should be aligning it's not. Sometimes you have to kind of remind it. So I'll double click that and I'll hit OK again to force an upload. So it's centering along the center line, aligning them up along the center. I change this to left, along the left. But notice that that's not on a grid line. That's not on a grid line. That is. Now, let's change the grid. Let's go to plottable area. And let's change our vertical line spacing, space between vertical lines, to 12. Nothing's, oh, I chose an increment of 6. That was a mistake. <laughs> let's do 14. And we saw a shift over. Now, <clears throat> this is where it gets messy. That section is 70 feet the left of that mark and each 10 feet is one inch on my scale so i've got seven inches of view to the left of that mark 
So if I change this to seven and hit OK, it lines up perfect. What happens if I go below seven? Let's say five. Now it's in a completely different location. So what does that mean? It is going to insert the zero zero, the center of the first section at the first whole vertical increment and the first whole horizontal increment that it can fit on the sheet. We play with the horizontal a lot. If I change this to three, you'll see it come down. First major and the first whole major here. Confusing? So if I change this to two, they shifted it over because it was able to find first whole one that it could fit. And we're aligning about the left, so I, it knows all of them will fit. If I align about the right, not really going to see a change. So let's come up here and let's make this one wider. Random. Now it's off the sheet, right? Hit OK to see if it'll think about it. Now it shifted it over because it's now this is the controlling one. So it's intelligent enough to look for each one. It iterates through them, each one that it can find that will be within a column. Look for the widths and slide it over so that this point, which is now controlling everything, because that's set up that this set this and it set the right, so it set that. So what it would have done if I change this increment to something else, if that overhangs, it's going to shift it over, which shifts this over, which begins the do loop, looking for the next whole increment. So how you adjust moving these left and right so you fit them on the sheet is exactly like we've just been doing. So I'm going to change this back to lower left and center and get it back to my normal position. And I want this to be more in the middle. Well, I know that my width here is right around um, 15 or right around 29 inches, if memory serves. Let's see here. 29.8, so 30 inches. So midpoint's right at around 15. So if I come over here and change my major grids on the vertical, now the vertical is the, this is the distance between vertical lines. Contrary to what this color over here is, this is the distance between vertical lines. This is the distance between the horizontal lines. So if I change this to 15 and hit enter, it slides it over and notice that it's hitting at that first point. Now my spacing between these is pretty great. So maybe we can squeeze it in, get fewer sheets. Let's come over here. Let's go to our array. And, that, and it's doing the same thing. Now we've been playing with horizontal a lot. Let's play with vertical. Let's change this to one inch increment. It pulled it down and it pulled it down. So this point is still hooked. The first intersection of whole grids that it can fall in is controlling it all. And it's putting a two inches in between each one, two whole grids. It doesn't count partials, as you can see here. That grid's ending before a major line. But then it went one, two, dink, partial line, one, two, dink. Okay. This is the buffer the buffer around each one, both let the top one and the bottom one gets a buffer, which is a total of two, which is our two and some change. So it's not an exact, it is controlled by the grid lines. So that's something to keep in mind, getting a little deep, but all that you really need to know is if you want to shift it left and right or up and down, adjust the plot area. And you can display those grids to help you get a feel for it. And then um, what I typically do in our, we don't view grids, so we just turn them back off once it's all said and done. And now we've got section sheets.
Now that you've got this, you can go to output and run the create sheets, create section sheets wizard, and it will automatically create layouts. That's it for this video. If you'd like this, please click the like button or feel free to subscribe for further updates.